Hey there everybody. Started to make this video a couple times. At first I thought it was just going to be about solar, but I think we have to be a little bit more comprehensive in terms of discussing power, electrical power that is, on a boat. Been through this a few times. In fact, I counted up I think 13 or 14 different arrangements between our four boats and our three RVs. Now, I want to make it clear there are other ways to arrange electrical systems on boats, but this is what's working best for us. First of all, let's talk about our different electrical charging sources. Of course, there's solar, which we're going to talk a good deal about today. There's also wind. We don't have a wind generator anymore, but we used to have one. Generators, or gensets as they're known, burning fossil fuels, gas or diesel, to produce electricity. And here's the source that most boat owners are familiar with, and that is the main auxiliary engine on a sailboat, driving alternators, which then charge the batteries. The goal with any setup is to produce as much electricity as you're using. So before our latest and greatest upgrade that Nick just did, uh, we had two solar arrays. One was 800 watts and one was 165 watts. We also had the wind generator, which was about 140 watts. I'd say on average that wind generator put out about 140 to 180 watts, but of course that depended on the wind. You had lots of wind, you had lots of power, no wind, no power. I would say that we were running the gen set between two and four hours a week just to kind of top off the batteries because we weren't quite keeping up with demands. And then in terms of what we're getting off the alternators, you know, we were motoring in and out of cuts, in and out of anchorages, and we'd use the alternators a little bit. There were basically three issues that we really didn't like about the last configuration. First of all, I hated running that generator for a couple reasons. First of all, the noise, but also the thing was getting a little <laughs> long in the teeth. It has over 13,000 hours. It still runs just fine. Well, we don't want to rely on it. Plus, it just it's noisy. I don't like it. The second thing we didn't like about the configuration was the wind generator. Um, you know, it was great having the power, but even in a light breeze, it did make quite a bit of noise. For Conductor Nick, can you, can you get just a little more life out of it? This was the D400. Theoretically, well at least as published, the quietest wind generator made. Basically you want the wind for when you're moving and you want it quiet <laughs> when you're at anchor. And having that thing in the back here just made it feel like it was super windy. The last thing that we didn't like about the last configuration was that the system didn't work together. What would happen is that the charge controller for the wind generator would see the voltage from the charge controller for the solar panels. And actually there were two charge controllers for the solar panels which didn't talk to each other either. So you had these competing charging sources all of which trying not to damage the batteries, but they would see each other and they would do the safe thing. They would limit their output current. So we just weren't getting the efficiency that we needed. So now we have more power than we know what to do with. And that feels really good, especially during these times where being self-sufficient is even more important. Absolutely. The setup we have on Clarity is, is actually pretty unique. I haven't met a lot of other owners who are running this way. But we have completely separated our house bank and our engine starting banks in terms of the batteries. We can parallel them, meaning we can combine the batteries all together. We've left a switch in place, but as we're configured 99.9% .9 of the time, the engine alternators charge just the starting batteries and then all of the rest of our charging through the solar panels goes directly to the house bank. Well, you might be asking yourself, why would you do that? The alternators are a great source of charging batteries, especially house batteries that on a lot of boats are always hungry. Well, the biggest reason is 
that the voltages involved for the house bank and the starting banks are almost always different. So as soon as you parallel those together, you're in essence shorting out one of the battery banks into another. If the voltages are very similar, no big deal, but over time, this could be a problem. And I'm also aware there's all sorts of hardware out there that's available whereby you can charge your house bank with your alternators and then use DC to DC charging systems to charge your starting batteries back. This is complicated and really it's just not necessary as long as you've got enough solar. The question is how much energy do you need? And this is really highly individual. You can make this really complicated, put together energy budgets where you see exactly how much each appliance needs. Calculate everything out, and that's a useful practice. But I just want to give some general guidelines on what we've seen in terms of how much solar and or wind you need so that you can just rely on passive energy production instead of the engine alternators or a generator. So here are our rough guidelines. With 400 watts of solar, or solar and wind, you'll probably be able to keep your refrigerator running, and that's about it. Maybe charge up an iPad or a computer from time to time. At 800 watts, you'll be able to keep the refrigerator running and some miscellaneous electrical equipment on board. However, if you're going places, if you're actually en route and you're using your autopilot and your chart plotter and a bit more energy, you're probably going to have to run the engine from time to time to keep things topped up. Now at 1200 watts, you're going to be able to run your water maker enough to keep two people fairly clean and fresh your fridges, and some miscellaneous electrical equipment. But if the clouds come or the wind dies, you're probably going to have to use your engines or another source to charge up the batteries. At 1600 watts, here's where we're starting to get independent of the fossil fuels completely. At 1600 watts, at least in the tropics, solar and wind will cover most of your needs most of the time. There will be a few weeks here and there where the clouds come in and you'll need to run the engines or the genset, but most of the time you're in good shape. At 2000 watts of passive energy production, you can more or less forget about your power consumption altogether. Now you can't go crazy, you can't run your hot water heater off your inverter or anything like that, but you're not going to have to look at the state of charge very often. More or less at 2000 watts you've got your bases covered. At 2400 watts, which is what we've got on Clarity now, now we've got more than we need. Even with our basic consumption, running the water maker quite a bit, lots of computers, iPads, and two fairly hungry refrigerators, we've got power to spare. In fact, almost all the time we're looking at the batteries charged up to 100% of capacity by lunchtime. That allows us to look at what other things we might be able to power off the inverter. We can run our air conditioning. It draws a lot of power, right over 100 amps at 12 volts through the inverter. So we'd be able to run the air conditioning for a few hours in the evening to cool things down. We could also change over to induction cooking and maybe an induction barbecue. I know what you're saying, that's more wattage than you thought you might need. Well, here's the deal. Especially with sailboats, you're always dealing with shadows on your solar panels. So to get the kind of output that you need to support those things that we were just talking about, that's about what's required. I bet you I've owned uh, five or six or maybe even eight different brands of panels over the years. I went with sun power panels because of the high quality of the actual cells. They're one piece cells that don't have a whole bunch of soldered circuits, which has been a problem that I've seen in the past with other panels that I've purchased. And while there are some better panels than others quality wise and efficiency wise, what I think I've discovered, it's 
much more important how you got the panels wired and configured than the actual panels themselves. This time around, I have got three arrays. Two of those arrays are with semi-rigid or flexible panels that I have got insulated with corrugated plastic. It's a trick that I actually learned from Rian of Top Secret. That makes a big difference in terms of keeping the panels cooler and thus more efficient. All of the panels are sun power panels and across the back we've got 327 watt rigid solar panels. So all together we've got about 2400 watts. That's more than enough. Let's talk about charge controllers. Each array has its own charge controller. That means that as the shadows are cast across one array, the controller just lowers down gently. It doesn't take down all of the panels at once. So each array is getting the maximum efficiency by having its own charge controller. All of the charge controllers now are from Victron. They're networked together, they are all talking to each other, and they're sharing one voltage sense so that they each know what they're contributing to the entire system. We've also got a really cool readout called the color control where we can see just exactly how much, how many amps and how much wattage is coming out of each solar array. We're up front now, and while it doesn't really look like much, this is really the heart and soul of our setup, and that is our lithium battery bank. We've got three 300 amp hour rely on batteries. Lithium takes the charge so much better than AGMs or lead acid does, making the whole system more efficient. But also it supplies the voltage back to everything in the system, the inverter and all the pumps and fans and lights and everything that's running on the boat. It supplies that at a stable voltage which means that all those motors are much, much happier. We've got so much solar now that it looks like we're probably gonna be able to get rid of this bad boy here that I'm leaning on. That's our 9KW Northern Lights generator. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It runs really, really well, but it's got high hours as we were talking about, and it makes noise. And if we don't need it, why should we carry around an extra, I don't know, 400 pounds, something like that? So it looks like this summer we'll probably get rid of the genset. Anyway, that's how we handle electrical power on Clarity. I'm sure the system will continue to evolve just a little bit. And again, I don't want to make it sound like this is the only way to configure your boat. In some situations, it could make a lot more sense to draw power off of your engine alternators and go with a lot less solar. And in some cases, maybe just a little Honda EU 2000 generator will do the trick. All right, take care, everybody. Until next time, bye.